Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Military TV. In today's episode, we're going to take a look at a Russian supersonic interceptor aircraft, the Mikoyan MiG-31, and see what's so special about it. If you're eager to learn more about this topic, stay with us and don't go anywhere. Also known as Foxhound by its NATO reporting name, the Mikoyan MiG-31 is a supersonic interceptor aircraft which was built for the Soviet Air Forces. Famous for being one of the fastest combat jets in the world, MiG-31 was designed and manufactured by Mikoyan, a Russian aerospace and defense company headquartered in Moscow. MiG-31 is based on and shares similar elements with the MiG-25, and indeed was made to replace the earlier MiG-25 Foxbat. The Defense Ministry of Russia expects the MiG-31 to be active in service until 2030 and beyond. This statement was confirmed in 2020 when the government released an announcement about extending the service lifetime from 2500 to 3500 hours on the existing airframe. Let's first take a look at the history of the Mikoyan MiG-31. The Soviet Union's Air Defense Forces VPVO required a number of large interceptors to monitor its vast boundaries during the Cold War. Most light fighters such as the early MiGs were not adequate to the task as they lacked the range and speed to quickly climb and intercept supersonic American bombers flying over the Arctic to drop bombs on the Soviet Union. The single-seat MiG-25 could fly at high speeds, altitudes, and rates of climb. Nevertheless, it lacked maneuverability at low altitudes and was difficult to fly. The MiG-25's top speed was generally limited to Mach 2.83, although with the danger of engine damage, it might reach Mach 3.2 or higher. Development of the replacement for MiG-25 started with YE-155MP prototype which flew on September 16, 1975. Though it shared some similar characteristics with MiG-25, the prototype had a longer fuselage capable of housing the radar operator's cockpit and was designed quite differently. A notable development at this stage was the MiG-31's advanced radar, with the skill for both lookup and lookdown confrontation as well as numerous target tracking. With far more sophisticated weapons, sensors, and enhanced capacity of range which was almost doubled from the MiG-25, the MiG-31 substituted the Tu-128 as the long-range interceptor serving the Soviet Union since the 1960s. The updated capacity of MiG-31 gave the Soviet Union an interceptor with the efficacy to confront the Western intruders comprised of low-flying missiles and bombers at comparably long range. The MiG-31 began to be serially produced in 1979. A flock of four MiG-31 interceptors can control an airspace with a total length of 800 to 900 kilometers, and its radar was capable of detecting targets up to a maximum range of 200 kilometers with typical detection width along the front of 225 kilometers. Design-wise, the MiG-31 was expected to fulfill several objectives. First, to intercept cruise missiles as well as the launching aircraft by seizing missile launch range by the quickest possible means. Second, to safeguard the strategic bombers in long-range missions. Third, detect and attack low-flying cruise missiles, UAVs, and helicopters. And lastly, to supply possible air defense in some areas which are not protected by ground-based air defense systems. The production of MiG-31 ended in 1994. For the first batch of production, a total of 519 MiG-31s, including 349 baseline models, were produced at the SoCal plant between 1976 and 1988, while the final batch of MiG-31B variant was produced between 1990 and 1994. In the final phase of production, a total of 50 aircraft were acquired by the Kazakhstan Air Force following the fall of the Soviet Union. Now, let's see what kind of features the MiG-31 has. Just like its predecessor MiG-25, MiG-31 is a large twin-engine aircraft with side-mounted intake ramps and shoulder-mounted wings with 2.94 aspect ratio along with two vertical tail fins. Thanks to its highly aerodynamic and streamlined body, MiG-31 is skilled when it comes to flying with high speeds at relatively low altitude. 
However, it doesn't hamper the aircraft from tracking multiple targets concomitantly at high altitudes as the design allows MiG-31 to do so. On the other hand, combined materials like welded nickel steel, titanium, aluminum alloy, and composites made up the aircraft's airframe, with each of the materials having a different portion of percentage. Looking through its cockpit, MiG-31 is complemented with digital avionics such as multifunction displays MFDs, and liquid crystal displays LCDs, to help the aircraft keep updated instrument readings and information regarding the radar. On both the front and back sides of the cockpit, zero ejection seats are installed to allow the pilot to fly at his or her selected height and airspeed. The pilot sits in the front cockpit seat, while the weapons system officer, WSO, sits in the back cockpit seat, supervising radar operations and weapon deployment, reducing the pilot's workload and enhancing efficiency. For the armament, MiG-31 is fitted with four long-range R-33 air-to-air missiles, codenamed AA-9 Amos by NATO. The launching of R-33 can be done in inertial navigation mode in order to destroy targets at extreme range. Four R-60MK short-range missiles and two Biznavat R-40 TD-1 medium-range missiles are also on board. The MiG-31 aircraft has a 6-barrel 30mm internal gun, GHS-6-23M, mounted above the starboard main landing gear bay. The cannon has an ammunition capacity of 800 rounds and can fire at a rate of nearly 10,000 shots per minute. The AA-12 Adder missile and numerous Russian air-to-ground missiles AGMs, such as the AS-17 Krypton anti-radiation missile, can be carried by the MiG-31BM variant. On top of that, MiG-31 is designed to take out huge, fast targets like the SR-71 Blackbird, B-1 Lancer Bomber, and B-52 Stratofortress. Presently, the MiG-31 is considered the standard long-range interceptor of the Russian Air Force and is expected to be active until the 2030s. The MiG-31 was also chosen as the primary carrier aircraft for the Kinzhal hypersonic missile. A mid-life upgrade of the MiG-31 is currently being procured and this modification will integrate a number of new strike weapons into the MiG-31 and modernize most of its systems. Lastly, let's take a look at the operational history of the MiG-31. The main operator of MiG-31s is the Soviet Union Air Force. In 1981, the Soviet Air Defense Forces PVO deployed the MiG-31 in combat. More than a decade later, in 1992, Russia offered the MiG-31 to Finland as part of a new fighter selection program. But the offer was not accepted because Russia had already presented the MiG-29. Finland declined the offer and instead recruited a fresh fighter from a selection program. On the other side, Syria ordered eight MiG-31E aircraft for its air force in 2007. The order was apparently delayed in May 2009 due to Israeli pressure or a shortage of Syrian cash. Six MiG-31s were reportedly supplied to the Syrian Arab Air Force on August 15, 2005 according to Turkish news outlets. But Russia denied making MiG-31 aircraft for Syria. Anyways, that's all for today. Thanks for watching and see you in the next episode.